Hey everyone, Dr. Frunky here with an awesome new knife console for you on the Russian Overkill. This is a collaborative knife between Shirogorov Knives and R.J. Martin. R.J. Martin is a legendary knife maker and knife designer, most popular probably for his Q36 model, but he also makes a knife called the Overkill. And R.J.'s overall design silhouette is very um, signature. He has a very signature style. It's very unique and it's instantly recognizable as one of his designs. And this, as I mentioned, is a production collaboration with Shirogorov knives. I've done a number of videos on a number of Shirogorovs on my channel. I really like their manufacturing excellence. And when I saw that this one was going to become available, uh, I had to jump on the opportunity. Now, this is a limited edition. Uh, Shirogorov sort of has different tiers. They have production knives. They have higher level production knives. They have custom division knives. They have full custom knives made by Sergei himself. And then they do sometimes these sort of one-off projects. A lot of them like the Sinkovich Sigma, the Sinkovich Pero, the John Barker collaboration. This is in that vein. It is a limited edition, small sample, this time limited to only 200 examples in the entire world. Um, and this is, this is where that falls into. So this is really exciting to get my hands on this. Uh, I have to give props to Recon One. Recon One is the American distributor that sold this knife. Uh, I was able to enter their lottery. If you want to figure out how to do that, go to recon1.com and you can find out more. If you follow them on Instagram, they will announce these things. And that's how I heard about it. And I was lucky enough to be drawn. Um, actually, I owe a bunch of credit to uh, my buddy Eugene Kwan. He was the one that got pulled. I asked him to enter for me and he let me get it. So let's go ahead and look at the certificate of authenticity. It says the Russian overkill. Blade Steel M398. Yes, we're going to talk about that a little bit. It is a titanium handle with a roller bearing system, and we've got our signatures from RJ Sergey and the number 128 out of 200. So, nice little card here. It comes in the uh, standard collaboration brown box that we've seen uh, for lots of other Shiro collabs. So, let's go ahead and look at a few of the details on this knife. Very, very nicely finished. Immediately, it is a very good looking knife. The RJ Martin design language is very unique and really, really nice in the way that this is executed. This has done a couple of things that Shirogorov doesn't always do. It's nice and thin, first of all. It's almost like the F95 Slim models. Um, but it also retains all of the qualities of a Shirogorov you want to see. So let's go ahead uh, and get some vital signs on this guy so we can see what we are working with. This is not a small knife. Up front, you are really looking at a four inch blade. Honestly, this may even be a hair over four inches, depending on how you're measuring it, but it is right at four inches. Overall length is coming in at nine inches. The handle is coming in right at about five inches, just a hair under five inches right there. We will bring out the caliper so I can talk a little bit about the thicknesses. I did say it was rather thin. The blade stock is coming in at a standard 156 thousandths right there. That is standard. And we are coming in at under half an inch here at 0.49 on the handle scale. So that's really, really nice. Let's bring out another couple of knives for a size comparison. Uh, I don't have a lot of production knives at the moment, but I have this Spyderco Sage 1 and this Benchmade 940, so you can see that this is a very, very large knife. Uh, another knife that I recently got, I've already done a video on this and I won't likely make another one, but this is the new sharp by design evo typhoon coming in with about a three and a half inch blade so you can see exactly how this dwarfs uh how the shiro dwarfs pretty much anything else in your collection this is a full size knife ladies and gentlemen very very big however because of the shirogorov trickery with their milling both internally and externally this four inch bladed knife comes in at 4.77 ounces. That is a pretty good weight for a knife of this size category. For a nine inch overall knife coming in at 4.7 ounces, 
with this uh, solid titanium construction is extremely nice. So let's go ahead and break this knife down anatomically. So up front, we are looking at a blade of M398 steel. Uh, it actually says it right there on the inside, M398. So what is M398? Well, it's an exciting, relatively new steel that uh, takes some of the characteristics of M390 and it sort of turns it up to 11, specifically the edge retention qualities. The way that they have composed this steel, it has very, very good wear resistance, which means that it will have good edge retention. This does come with a sacrifice of toughness, though. Uh, Laren Thomas over at Knife Steel Nerds has a great article online about M398 and why it is appealing, but why it may not really be the most exciting new knife steel that's out there. Namely, he says it has excellent edge retention. It's way up there with like S125V in terms of edge retention, but its toughness is rather low. This is not a knife that you want to go prying on stuff with. This is going to be a hard blade. It's going to hold an edge, but you don't want to really be pushing it through metal or prying on stuff. You're going to get cracks and things like that. So it is a very exciting new steel. Uh, another caveat to that is that it's pretty much only available in Russia right now uh, as it stands. It's a Bowler Udenholm steel available only in Russia right now. So it's cool to get it on a Russian knife. They are adding it to some of the other F95 series, so keep an eye out for other M398 blades. Uh, this knife did not get extensively tested in any meaningful way. This will not be a video on the qualities of M398. Again, I refer you to Professor Thomas's article to learn more about it. But the blade itself is done beautifully. This is the classic RJ Martin profile with this elevated thumb ramp and then the nice drop point design. Here we see the classic Shirogorov uh, plunge grinds going on here. RJ typically will do a hollow type grind and there's a bit of some curvatures going on and even a bit of recurve to a lot of his blades. They've chosen to do a nice flat edge going on here, no recurve. Beautifully finished blade. We have nearly mirror polished flats. It's a very, very high satin finish on the flats. And then we have their classic Shirogorov high luster uh, blasted finish. And then the edge itself, much like a lot of these limited edition Shiro's, is basically mirror polished. It is incredibly sharp, almost too sharp. This is one of those instances where I wish they had left the edge not mirror polished. Uh, it, it, does, it has that cutting performance where it's almost too sharp for its own good. Uh, regular knife guys might understand what I'm talking about. Uh, when the edge is mirror polished, it doesn't really behave uh, quite as aggressively as one might hope for a blade. It's, it's an interesting thing that happens. That being said, the remainder of the blade is beautifully finished. You want to notice this flipper tab and the chamfers that it has. There is no jimping on that flipper tab and as you bring that blade back into the handle, you're going to notice it's a bit of the pocket pecker. Uh, yes, that word is coming back here for this knife, but this is sort of the classic RJ flipper. The thing that RJ is most noted for is the development of a very snappy and excellent detent. His custom knives are very well known for having a very excellent flipper action. He is the godfather of the excellent flipper action. He didn't invent the flipper, but he may have perfected it with the crisp detent. Here you can see his logo on the backside there, RJM. So moving back to the pivot on this guy and talking a little bit more about the flipper. This is running on single row roller bearings. Uh, let's see if I can find that uh, inside of each Shirogorov knife. Let's see if this focuses on it. There is a little icon, perhaps you can see it up in there, I'm not sure if you're seeing that on the camera, that indicates the type of uh, pivot that is within each knife. This one has a single row of roller bearings. They're sometimes called needle bearings by other companies. Um, Shirogorov does single row bearings. 
uh, ball bearings. They do multi-row ball bearings. They do single row roller bearings and they do multi-row roller bearings. The MRRBS are usually re uh, reserved for the custom divisions or the custom knives and the single row rollers are reserved for these special editions. Does that make any significant difference in this knife? Well, to be perfectly honest with you, I might have preferred the multi-row ball bearing system. Um, when I first got this knife, it was actually rather tight. It was really, really tightened down. And I waited a few days to make this video because I wanted the action to break in. And it most certainly has. The action is very smooth. Uh, and very predictable, but I don't know that it's quite as fast or as drop shutty as the multi-row ball bearing system. This is by no means a bad pivot. As you can see, it really drops shut nicely and it has a very hydraulic feel to it. Classic Shirogorov smoothness. But I wonder what the benefit is in the single row roller bearing versus the multi-row ball bearing system. Uh, I obviously did not take this knife apart, and we're going to talk a little bit more about why, but uh, that is a bit of a question mark for me. Uh, the single row roller bearing versus the multi row ball bearing, which one is better? I couldn't tell you. This pivot is great. And what Shirogorov has really achieved on this knife is finally a very crisp detent. RJ should be very proud of the way that Shiro has handled the detent on this knife. As I mentioned before, RJ's claim to fame is basically perf oh, basically perfecting the detent on flipper knives by making it crisp. And while I don't think that this knife perfectly emulates a true custom RJ Martin, this is certainly the crispest and best detent that I have felt on pretty much any Shirogorov knife. It's bordering on almost too strong. You saw me misfire it a minute ago. With no jimping on this flipper tab, sometimes it's possible to misfire, but only because my finger slips off the flipper tab before I complete the action because the detent is so hard. But if you get a nice push button on it, it really fires out in a satisfactory way. Now we're gonna get to a bit of a complaint right here. Strangely, Shirogorov has decided to go Rick Hinderer on this flipper tab area and include jimping where the flipper tab is, at least where your index finger is going to land as it fires uh, that flipper. And so you're going to see me push on it here and my, fingers, my finger drags across this. Now it's not sharp. It's not nearly as sharp as older generation XM18s or even the modern generation XM18s. However, every time you flip, you are reminded that this is there. It does provide some very minor traction when you put the thumb to it right there. In my opinion, this is a big mistake. They should have either made it milled like they do on their regular knives or just left it out completely uh, because this really is more of an annoyance than it is actually a benefit in any meaningful way. I'm not getting any real extra traction on this part right here, but I am getting a little bit of finger annoyance every time I flip. And let's be honest, many of these Shirogorovs, particularly these limited edition collector knives, are not going to be used very much. They're going to be flipped millions of times though, and so that becomes a bit annoying. Moving back to the handles here, these are super impressively milled titanium handles. You'll notice that there is a flat area here, and then there is some nicely milled seashell pattern uh, on this bevel here. You'll notice that the lanyard tube is in a recessed cavity here, very nice little detail. On the back side, you're gonna notice some unique features. You're gonna see a little strange lock bar addition right there. That raises up off of the lock bar, but that is how Shiro has secured the lock bar insert. There is a steel insert inside. Oh, excuse me. And it is also an over travel stop. If you look right here, you can see a little cutout in the titanium. That little, there's a little bar of steel that will prevent you from pushing the lock bar too far over. 
In classic Shirogorov style, there is also a tab that will prevent the lock bar from traveling too far inward as it wears in over time. The clip, as you can see, uh, is a 3D milled type. It is somewhat recessed into the knife here, into the handle. I'm not a huge fan of this functionally. It somewhat limits how uh, you can use the knife and I find that it bunches fabric up a little bit and sometimes grabs a bit too tight. In classic Shirogorov fashion, the clip is meant to be wear worn with a very thin material. It binds up a little bit with thicker materials, but it does function okay. They have milled it in such a way that it is only touching the flat part of the handle up here. Uh, and so it does slide in and out of the pocket okay, but this recessed area makes it a little bit challenging. And again, I'm just not a huge fan. Right as you need to be putting the material into the lip of the clip, there is another edge that's sort of preventing that. So let's talk about the hardware on this knife a little bit. In classic Shirogorov fashion, they have done their designer pivot. In fact, this time, the front pivot is actually for display only. This is not functional. In lots of Shirogorov knives, the display side and the clip side are both functional screws. This is not a functional screw. You cannot put a Shirogorov driver in there and use it. It's, it's cupped, it's not uh, shouldered to accept a screwdriver. The collar around that is actually blackened titanium. That's very cool. I featured some blackened titanium on my channel before. If you go back and watch the brown knife servo videos, uh, I definitely enjoy that. They also did a blackened backspacer and a blackened clip. There's a blackened collar on the back here. So blackened titanium involves taking the titanium and superheating it and then quenching it in oil and you get this amazing black finish. Also the hardware here and here. So this is a, the next point I wanted to make. Unfortunately, this knife comes with some very odd proprietary screws. And this is probably going to be the biggest Achilles heel of this knife. Shirogorov knives are already difficult enough to disassemble and maintain. This one has only one side functional pivot screw. And then it has proprietary screws on one side. Notice that they go all the way through and they secure to the front side. It's a beautiful look. But I've heard from some people that these screws have started to back out of their knives. They were not Loctited. My, mine have not changed at all. I've kept an eye on their exact orientations over a couple of weeks now, and they haven't moved at all. So I got a good one, but some people didn't. And how do you put these screws back in without the appropriate driver? And that most certainly was not included with the knife. And so that brings me to my final point. This knife cost $1,550. Most Shirogorov knives range from about $800 to $1,000. We already know that there's a significant Shirogorov tax, but once you start getting into these more limited edition knives and you get these special features, the price goes up rather quickly. So at $1,550, I would hope that they would include a small screwdriver in case something happens to the knife or I just feel like maintaining my own knife. This sort of prevents anyone from ever maintaining this knife. Now, I'm also of the school of thought that knives don't really need to be disassembled very much. Uh, there's definitely a trend in the community to disassemble every single knife every day, even if you don't use it. I mean, people want to take their knives apart. It's not necessary. This knife will function beautifully with just blowing it out with compressed air but I do like to be able to fix the knife if there's a problem. If one of these screws backed out, I'd be SOL and not be able to fix the knife. So, what do I think of this knife? Well, number one, it is a gorgeous knife. They have really done RJ uh, justice with the design of this knife and the execution. It is really beautiful. It has some very nice features. The blade is great. The blade steel is very unique. The hardware is very unique with its blackened finish. Uh, the ergonomics are excellent in the hand. As I mentioned, it's nice and slim. There are no hot spots whatsoever. The clip doesn't work quite as well as I would hope that it would. And the hardware is kind of a big problem for me. Another design element that sort of irks me a little bit is the backspacer. 
Uh, I realize that this is a design element, but as you come to the top of the backspacer, notice how the scales sort of chamfer away from the backspacer, and then they have an edge right there, and the backspacer ends there. You know, I'm a fan of artistic choices. This is honestly very annoying to me. It looks like they used a backspacer that was two sizes too small, and then they didn't really think about this part. I realize this is probably intentionally designed this way, but to my eye, this is very unpleasant. Uh, and this is a simple thing. Otherwise, it is an extremely good looking knife. Nothing else is visually unattractive. I, I don't really enjoy that. So my final thoughts on this knife is, this is very special if you are a Shirogorov collector. If you have a large collection of Shiros and you wanna add one of these special ones to your collection, it makes sense. If you are looking for a Shirogorov to use and carry, this is not it. This is a limited edition. Uh, it has a steel that's not really so tough. I worry about chipping and things like that with a steel like this. Uh, and then you add to it the fact that you can't maintain or disassemble it and it costs so much extra money above the regular Shiro's. So I think that they accomplished their goal with this knife. I think that they did a great job with the design. It is certainly very smooth. It's extremely well put together, at least my example is. Dead center, take a look at that. The backspacer does include that cup and so you'd really need to be on center. It's dead centered, it looks really great. You know, again, take a look at the backspacer back here and the way it fits the handle. There's a gap and it just annoys me, it's just weird. Uh, so, this really is a double-edged sword and I don't mean that with any puns. It has a lot of good and it has some bad. At the end of the day, I'm not gonna end up keeping this knife because uh, I want a more functional Shirogorov. I want one that I can take apart and or modify and this is just simply not that. I just don't have the desire to keep a high-end collectible Shirogorov in the collection right now, and so this one is gonna be moving on. However, it was great to be able to check this out. Shirogorov is one of the best manufacturers in the world, uh, in my opinion, of pretty much any folding knife. Uh, there's some rumors about how they are manufactured, specifically where they are manufactured. Uh, is it manufactured in Russia? Maybe. Uh, that is for another day, but uh, this is a very special knife. It probably costs too much and the proprietary hardware and stuff make it difficult. So those are my thoughts. Let me know what you guys think of the Russian overkill by Shirogorov down in the comments below. If you haven't already, click like and subscribe to my channel. And as always guys, this is Dr. Frunky saying take care. Oh yeah, don't forget to follow me on Instagram at Dr. Frunky. Thanks guys. Bye.